Hello, students and other viewers. This is the Teta Television from Morogoro. My name is Sam Newa William Kuimbo, your English teacher. Today again, we meet in our uh, uh, lesson. We are going to share something. This uh, and it's about uh, expressing oneself. The talk that we're going to present, that we're going to discuss today, will be about expressing oneself. Uh, the subtopics, um, the subtopics will be expressing one's feelings, ideas, opinions, and emotions. At the end of the topic, you as a student is expected to express the personal ideas, opinions, views, and emotions on a variety of issues in different contexts. But also, you'll be able to read and dramatize a dialogue appropriately. The third specific objective that you'll be able to use the auxiliary verbs in correct sentences. The fourth of the specific objective, you'll be able to write imaginary compositions correctly. And the fifth one, you'll be able to make correct distinction between the functional and creative writing. The fifth will be you'll be able to construct the conditional sentence type one, type two, and type three. Now to start with, what does it mean by expressing oneself? As the topic states, expressing oneself. Expressing oneself is the ability of someone to air out his or her opinions or views or ideas and it can be um, in, in terms of oral or presentation or through writing. So we have the oral through spoken by the word of mouth or through writing by writing down on a piece of paper uh, whether it's a composition, whether it, you are trying to express your feelings, you can put them into writings or you can speak them out. That is oral presentation. So this can be done both orally as well as in writing. So when we speak, we normally express the so-called facts and opinions. That is, when you talk about a fact, it's something which is accompanied with evidence. And when you talk about the opinion, it's something which is open for challenges. That is, you express something that can be disputed by others or that can be rejected with others. And if you provide evidence to support what you have expressed, then that will turn to be a fact. So ideas or the opinions that we normally give can be shared in groups uh, when people discuss a given topic or in a dialogue between two or more people. So we can share ideas in groups. When we conversate, when we do conversation, we can do it in the form of sharing ideas, opinions, and so on and so forth. Expressing one experience. Um, get seated in groups of uh, three. Three. We are going to practice, we are going to read and dramatize the dialogue below. We have a dialogue that we are going to practice. We have three characters. There is Masala, we have Ngoto, and the other character is Kajula. So you know the dialogue, it's like a conversation which will be held between uh, and the, uh, the ones who are going to lead us in this um, uh, dialogue are uh, the characters that I've mentioned, Masara, Ngoto, and Kajula. Masala starts, Hi, Ngoto, how many story books from the library have you read so far? Ngoto, I have read six up to the end, but I have read several other halfway. How many have you read, Kajula? Kajula, I have read four, but actually I got only three stories. Masala, what do you mean? Kajula, I read one story twice. First, the Swahili version, then its English translation. Ngoto, which of the stories did you enjoy the most? Kajula, 
the one I read in both Kiswahili and English. Masala. What was it all about? Now the question, what was it all about? It's the place now where the one who is being asked will have place place. I said before that we can express, we can express ourselves in the form of speaking, that is oral, or in the form of writing. Now the question, what was it all about? It means you have to narrate, you have to explain a bit concerning uh, what you're being asked. Kajula starts by saying, it was about, and then we expect that there will be narratives about the story. He is going to explain in detail concerning the story is how the question requires him to do. So that is how we can, uh, we can express. That is how we can express our ideas. That's how we can express the stories that we have read. If you have read a certain story, you can explain it to others to know what the story was all about. So that the ability of expressing something in front of other people is what you call expressing yourself expressing yourself. You can be asked a question and then you have to state, you have to explain, you have to give the answer in the form of explanation, either orally or in writing. Now, observe the following sentence and then classify them whether they are facts or opinions. At the very beginning I explained about what is a fact and what is an opinion. When you talk about a fact, it's something that can be supported with evidence. Something that can be supported with evidence. And when you talk about opinion, it is something that is open for challenges. That is, it needs to be supported in order to be the fact. But if it's not supported with any evidence, it remains to be open for challenges. Now we have some few sentences here indicating uh, both the fact or the opinion. It can be a fact or opinion. For example, A. Tanganyika got her independence in 1961. My dear students and other viewers, is this the fact or opinion? Tanganyika got her independence in 1961. Is it a fact or opinion? Good. I hope you had the correct answer. This is a fact. We are talking about Tanganyika getting independence in 1961. We have some documents showing Tanganyika got independence in 1961. It's obvious and can be supported with evidence. So this is a fact. B. Dodoma is the capital city of Tanzania. Dodoma is the capital city of Tanzania. My dear students and other viewers, is this a fact or an opinion? Dodoma is the capital city of Tanzania. Is it a fact or opinion? Good. I hope you had the correct answer. Dodoma is the capital city of Tanzania. This is a fact because it expressed something that can be supported with evidence. And therefore, it's not an opinion. It is something which it can accompany with evidence. This is a fact. C. Women are weak creatures. Women are weak creatures. My dear students and other viewers, can this be a fact or an opinion? Is it a fact or an opinion? Yes. I hope you had the correct answer. Not everyone would say a woman is a weak creature. Others would say no, a woman is strong, as strong as a man. And therefore it's open for challenges. There are those who can oppose it and there are those who can support it. And therefore, we cannot put it to be straightforward to be a fact because we don't have evidence to support that women are weak creatures. So this is an opinion. Women are weak creatures, this is an opinion. D, COVID-19 is a world disaster. COVID-19 is a world disaster. My dear students, is this a fact or opinion? COVID-19 is the world disaster. Good. Hope you had the correct answer. COVID-19 is a world disaster. This is a fact. We all know how COVID-19 is killing people worldwide. It's a disaster. And even WHO declared 
COVID-19 to be the word disaster. So it is something that is, can be accompanied with evidence because people are vanishing. People are perishing, vanishing like shadows because of the disease. And therefore, it's something that can be accompanied with scientific evidence. People are passing away and this is a fact. E. Most of the beautiful girls are arrogant. Most of the beautiful girls are arrogant. Can you think about this? Can it be an opinion or a fact, my dear students? Most of the beautiful girls are arrogant. How do you say this? Is it an opinion or a fact? Good. I hope you had the correct answer. Most of the beautiful girls are arrogant. Not everyone will state that every beautiful girl is arrogant. It is open for challenges. Someone can say, no, we have some of the beautiful girls who are not arrogant. And we can have also few who are arrogant. So you cannot make generalization. It is open for challenges. And therefore, this statement, most of the beautiful girls are arrogant, is an opinion of someone. It's not a fact. It is an opinion in the sense that it is open for challenges. It can be challenged by other people. If the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. My dear students, is this a fact or opinion? Is it a fact or opinion? I hope most of you are taking chemistry. I think this has to do with chemistry. The boiling point of water, boiling point of uh, uh, different liquids. You know them. I think you have read in, in chemistry. So can it be a fact or opinion? Good. You had the correct answer. This is a fact. We are talking about the boiling point of water which is 100 degrees centigrade and it's known scientifically. It is a scientific, a scientific uh, proof or it's a scientific, it is scientifically proved that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade and when we pass through different chemistry books and some other books you can find that uh, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade but also we have boiling points of different other liquids which can differ from one liquid to another liquid. I'm not the science teacher, I'm just trying to explain a little bit concerning the boiling point of water. Now having gone through uh, this first part of expressing oneself, that is how can I express different ideas, but also uh, we have passed through the, the issue of fact and opinion, which is very controversial. Most of students confuse between what is a fact and what is an opinion. Even in our day-to-day -day conversation, we always air out opinions and we regard them to be facts. You know, you can be making argument with your friend, speaking to your friend or speaking to people, but what you air out is not really the fact. You just state or you just air out the, the so-called hearsay. That is, you have heard somewhere and then you impose it the way it is. Actually, it's not a fact, it's an opinion, but you express it as a fact. And if someone says, challenges you and says, do you have any evidence? No, I just heard it somewhere. No, it's not a fact, therefore. You have to state it as an opinion. It should be stated in the form of opinion. So, during this practice of expressing yourself, uh, we have some components which are very important for you to know so that you can be able to express yourself. And one of the uh, components that you have to be uh, called that with is the use of the primary auxiliary verb. Primary auxiliary verb. You know, when you express yourself, you cannot avoid the use of primary auxiliary verbs. They are there. And they normally go together with the verbs. Among the parts of speech, I think you know verb is mostly used. When we speak, most of the words that we speak are verbs. So primary auxiliary verbs are the helpers of the verbs, the main verbs. We talk about the assistant verbs, helping verbs. 
the other name primary auxiliary verbs. Now, primary auxiliary verbs play the role of helping the major verbs in the sentence. For example, you can have the primary auxiliary verb in the form of B. Now, in the B form of the primary auxiliary verb, we have the auxiliary verbs like is, he is singing, she is singing, it is raining, but also we have the am, I am teaching them, I am speaking, am, helping the main verb. And as for the case of the past, when you express this in the form of the past, you talk of he is singing, the past be he was singing. That is the concept of having this one here. Was. He is singing. He was singing. Was. Singing. The main verb added is the ing. Because we're expressing the, uh, the tense, the present tense. He is singing. He is singing now. He was singing in the past. Are. They are, because you cannot say they is, they are for plural. When we talk about plural, we use they are. They are singing now. They were singing. So we have the past were. They are for plural. They are singing now. They were singing. And we have also the being. It has been raining since morning. That is the first form, the B form. Then we have the new form. With the do form, we have the past of do is did. Hope my dear students know this. The past form of do is did. And the simple present of do is does. So you could say, you could, you could put it in this way. I did the work. And she doesn't like green mangoes, for example. She doesn't. Therefore, the negative form of does is doesn't, where the negative form of did is didn't. And therefore, you can have the did in the positive and did it in the negative, does and doesn't. So, didn't, I didn't do the work, she doesn't like green mangoes, etc., etc. So, we can set it in the form of positive as well as in the form of negative. So this is the second form of the primary auxiliary verb. But also, now we have uh, the have, the have right there, have or has, have or has. The past tense of these two is her. I have spoken English. I have taken a home. He has, he has sang a song. He has gone to the market. She has gone to the market. He, she, it, hers. He has, it has. You cannot say they has. When you talk about they, you have they have. I have, we have. And the past will be I had, we had does not really, you can just use the pronouns anyhow. I had, we had, it's a little bit different from the have and has, where you have to be very careful with the use of the pronoun. These two, has and have. But the past of it, you can state I had, she had, it had, etc, etc. So now I define the primary auxiliary verbs in the following dialogue. We have the dialogue here and uh, what you'll be supposed to do is to identify what are the primary auxiliary verbs found uh, in these uh, sentences. It's a dialogue. John, father, did you know that Jonas is traveling to Mozambique today? That is a question. Father, really? Who is he traveling with? John, his brother Paul. They actually about to leave. Father, that's very interesting. Has Jonas ever traveled out of Tanzania before? John, yes, of course. 
I remember he and his family have ever traveled to Malawi. Father, but Jonas doesn't like airplane or airplane. How he traveled to Mozambique? So that is a conversation. That is a conversation. Now from that dialogue, from the dialogue that we have read, that I have read for you, not the use of the foreign auxiliary verbs. We have the use of is, is in the form of, my dear students, in the form of, it is found in the form of be, as the primary auxiliary verb. I say be, is, a verb. Okay? You remember that? Are, have, has, and doesn't. They can be found in our dialogue. They are found in our dialogue. Now, the mentioned words above are called primary auxiliary verbs. They help us of the main verb. They do help the main verb. Look here. Jonas is traveling. Jonas is traveling. Now, we have the verb travel, travel, traveling in present. Jonas is traveling. Jonas is traveling. So, we have the helping verb is and the main verb travel. Okay? That clear, my dear students? Good. Who is he traveling? You can ask a question. Who is he traveling? You know, when you turn it the other way around, it will be he is who? Jonas. Okay? He is. So the is here indicated is. He is. Who is he traveling? He is traveling with Jonas. He is traveling. Travel. This is the main verb. Travel. Traveling. Because I'm expressing the present aspect. He is traveling to Mombasa, etc. etc. So likewise, who is he traveling with? We have the helping verb is right there. Because the main verb is found, is, is found just immediately after the pronoun. He traveling. He traveling. Before it, we have the helping verb is. So when you turn it in the form of a statement, he is traveling. So now you can see properly the helping verb right there. Has Jonas traveled? Has Jonas traveled to Malawi? Has Jonas? We started with the primary observer. Has. Then we have the noun Jonas. Then we have the verb travel in the past. Has Jonas traveled? And then when you turn it the other way around so that you can see properly the uh, observer, Jonas has traveled. Jonas has traveled. Has followed by the main verb. So we have the noun, Jonas, and we have the helping verb, has traveled. They, you talk about the plural, Jonas and his family, all together. They can be represented by the pronoun they. They have traveled. You remember my dear students when I pointed out area? I pointed out area that you cannot have they is. You talk of they are, they are. Or you say they, you cannot say they has. You are talking about plural. So for singular, uh, for plural, it will be they have. He has. They have. They have. He has. Okay? For this case here, they, they, Jonas and his family, have traveled to Malawi. They have traveled to Malawi. So, in brackets, St. Jonas and his family can be represented by the pronoun they. I hope you know uh, that the pronoun they goes with the plural form. It is, a, it is a plural form. They means many. Okay. Does Jonas like airplanes? Does Jonas like airplanes? Jonas doesn't. Now, we are trying to express in the form of negative. When I express in the form of negative, you remember previously? I pointed, I pointed it out that when I express the negative form of do can be in the past didn't, in simple present it will be doesn't. 
And therefore, Jonas doesn't like what? Jonas doesn't like traveling. Jonas doesn't like green mangoes, etc. etc. So we have Jonas doesn't, the negative form of do, but in the simple present tense. So this is the primary auxiliary verb in the form of negative. It is in the negative form. Now, you have to note the following. This important facts are very important for you to note as a student. A. Primary auxiliary verbs are used to express things when the main verb ends in ing or in em. ing for the case of the present continuous tense and en for the present perfect. For example, Jonas is taking a trip to Mozambique or Jonas is traveling to Mozambique. Traveling, ing at the end. Travel, traveling, ing. Jonas is taking a trip to Mozambique. Jonas is eating now, you know. So when you find in a, a situation like that one, you know that the helping verb here has helped us to know what type of a tense is the sentence. Okay? For that case, we are talking about the present tense. Jonas is speaking now. Is helping verb. ing speaking. So that expresses the present aspect. Jonas was taking a trip to Mozambique. When you talk about the past, Jonas was taking. We are still talking about the tenses. And this will be the past, the past continuous tense. Jonas was taking a trip to Mozambique, the past continuous tense. And when we express it in the present perfect, it will be Jonas has taken, has taken a trip to Mozambique. That is the present perfect. So you have to note that, that when the verb is expressed, in, uh, is added with the ing or the em, then the helping verb the primary auxiliary verbs will be used to express the tense. It will be used to express the tense, whether it's present tense, past tense, past perfect, etc. etc. Jonas had taken a trip to Mozambique. That is the past perfect tense. Had. You remember the past tense of his and his? Had. Jonas had. Jonas has taken a trip. Jonas had taken. So take, the word take here, take, the past participle, taken. Jonas had taken a trip to Mozambique. That is the past perfect. So you have to take note of this that when the verb is uh, added with the ing or en at the end, then the primary auxiliary verb will help us to express the tense. That is, it will express the text, whether present, past, or uh, any other type of tense that you know. The second aspect that we have to observe is that the primary auxiliary verbs show changes in the use of the personal pronoun. And I think this is one of the problems, it's a rampant disease among students, that they normally confuse the use of the pronouns when it comes to the issue of expressing themselves. That is, you can express yourself, but mixing the use of the pronouns with the helping verb, the primary, to be specific, the primary auxiliary verbs. So primary auxiliary verbs can show changes in the use of the personal pronoun. For example, the pronouns he, she, and it. The personal pronouns he, she, and it normally use the auxiliary is, was, his, and that. For example, he is, she is, it is, or he has, she has, it has, or he does or doesn't for negative, she does or doesn't for negative, or it does or it doesn't for negative. So you need no. You cannot use uh, any other uh, product. Uh, you cannot use. You cannot use other. Uh,
My dear students, so um, the second aspect that we have to observe when you use the primary auxiliary verb is, the, uh, is that we have to, uh, the primary auxiliary verbs show changes in the use of the personal pronouns. You know the personal pronouns, my dear students? When you talk about the personal pronouns, we refer to he, she, and it. These are the personal pronouns. Someone might wonder, how comes that it is one of the personal pronouns? Okay, it can be used also for animals, but for human beings, for an infant, for a small baby, we normally use it, it. So don't wonder, you should not, you should not wonder about it. So he, she, it, use the observed verb is, was, his, and does. For example, he is, he was in the past, she is, or she was in the past, it is or it was in the past. But also, you can use the primary auxiliary verb is, for example, he has, she has, or it has, or does, he does, or she does, or it does. And actually, this is very common when you express the negative. For example, he doesn't like, she doesn't, do this, she doesn't know how to say, etc, etc. So, uh, we use the auxiliary verbs is, was, has, and does when we use the personal pronouns. Take note of that. The pronoun I, which expresses the uh, singular, the singular, that is first person singular, person, first person singular, I, pronoun I, goes with the helping verb am, have and do. For example, I am teaching now. I am speaking now. Or I have. I have manipulated the computer. I have taken a hole. I have. I have. You see? The present perfect, by the way. So I will go with am, will go with have, and will go with do. So you have to be very keen, you have to be very careful on how to use the primary auxiliary verb, particularly when it comes to the issue of personal pronouns. You have to be very keen. The pronoun is you. Normally you use the auxiliary verb are, have, and do. You are speaking now. You are sleeping. You have taken my pen. You do know, etc. etc. So you are, you have, you do. Second person pronoun. Among the person pronouns, second it is this uh, uh, it is uh, it is second person pronoun, you, which is a little bit like neutral, you know, because you cannot say you is listening to me. <laughs> no, you cannot have such a thing. Even when you are talking to one person, you simply say, you are, you are. It doesn't imply that you are talking about plural. You are talking about singular. You are. It can be plural. It can be singular. You are. You are. You are singing now. You are singing now. Regardless of whether the one who is singing is one, or two, or three, or a group of people. So this is like neutral. Use auxiliary are. You are. That's why we don't have the word is here. It's not here. It is here. The is is not here. You is does not exist. You are, you have, and you do. Now, my dear students, we have the assignment here that will test us whether we have really grasped uh, what we have read here concerning the, uh, uh, concerning the primary auxiliary verb. How to use the primary auxiliary verb when we express ourselves, because uh, it has to do with the, uh, uh, you know, when we speak, when we express our ideas, when we express our feelings, we cannot avoid the use of primary auxiliary verbs. And therefore, let us test ourselves whether we have really got something from the lesson. Now, fill in the blank spaces the correct form of the auxiliary verb which is given in the brackets. The first question, our English teacher Dash dash like noise makers during her period. Our English teacher, dash dash, like 
noise makers during her period. In brackets, we have the primary auxiliary do. Do, my dear students, you see this? It's one of it's one of those forms of the primary auxiliary verb. Remember, be, do, have, and is. Okay, you remember that? Good. So. Which would be the uh, proper form of the primary auxiliary verb indicated in bracket to be filled here in the space provided? Read the sentence carefully and understand the proper form of the primary auxiliary verb that we have to fill in the opening space or in the back. Our English teacher, dash dash, like noisemakers during her period. And therefore, you can make it to be in the past or in the simple present. For example, if you talk about the past, you could say our English teacher didn't like noise makers during her period. If you talk about the past, our English teacher didn't like didn't like noise makers during her period. But actually, if you're talking about the habit of, it, of, of the teacher, the habit of the teacher that he doesn't like noise makers, doesn't so you could express it in the form of negative form of do. Remember, my dear students, negative form of do in simple present does plus not, doesn't. So our English teacher doesn't like noise makers during her period. So you have two alternatives, either uh, to express it in the past, also you can express it in the simple present, Ex uh, showing that it's the habit of the teacher and I, I know exactly that teachers don't like people who are making noise in the classroom. Uh, and therefore, uh, you could express it in the negative form. Doesn't. Our English teacher doesn't like noise makers during her period. Good. Question number two. They dash dash killed a lion. They dash dash killed a lion. In brackets, we have the helping verb his and he. Now, the question here is. Which helping verb will fit in the space provided? Or it will be suitable to be filled in the blank space. They dash dash killed a lion. Is it they has or they have? I explained it before, and I'm sure that for those who are making a forum, they can recall what I, I explained about the pronoun they. When you talk about plural, they, what are the helping verbs which goes with the pronoun they? They, do we have they is? No, a big no. They have, they his. Which is which? My dear students and other viewers, this is the challenge. Is it they has or they have? Good. You have the correct answer. The correct answer here is they him killed a lion. Him. This one here. Him. They indicates plural. And therefore, you cannot say they his. You talk of his when you have the pronoun he his, she his, or it has. You remember that? Good. So this one is for plural, the primary auxiliary verb which goes with the pronoun, which is in plural form. They have killed a lion. Good. Let us proceed. Question number three. The teacher, dash dash, going to mark our assignment in the class. In brackets, we have the form of the primary verb be. You remember? What are the forms of the B as the primary auxiliary verb. You remember that? At the very beginning, I showed you. B is, B can be are, B are, been, etc, etc. Now the teacher, dash dash going to mark our assignment in the class, B. What would be the primary observer verb to be filled in the blank space? Good. I hope you had the correct answer. The teacher is 
going to mark our assignment in the class. Why is? Because we have the ing to the verb, going to, going to, expressing, uh, uh, we can, sometimes in English we can express the future activity by using the word going to, going to. I'm going to travel. I'm going to sing a song for you. I'm going to so and so and so, and so on. So uh, we have, we cannot say the teacher, um, uh, the teacher are going to, we are talking about a single teacher. The teacher is going to mark our assignment in the class. So the form of the B, which will be proper B filled in the open space here, is the auxiliary verb, the primary auxiliary verb, is, the teacher is going to mark our assignment in the class. Good. Question number four. She, dash dash, finished the assignment on time. In brackets we have the word, the primary auxiliary verb, do, do. She, dash dash, finished the assignment on time. My dear students and other viewers, what can be the proper auxiliary verb to be filled in the blank space? In the open space, she dash dash finished the assignment on time. Do you remember the form of do? Good. With do, in the past we have did. Simple present does. And when you talk about the negative, do. In the past did. Negative form didn't. Okay, you get it? Do, does, negative form, doesn't. Now let's have a look to our sentence here. She, dash, dash, finished the assignment on time. What do you think could be the proper primary auxiliary verb to use in this sentence? Good. You have alternatives. You can say, she, did finish the assignment on time or if you are speaking it in the negative way it will be she didn't because you have the did plus not you have the one didn't she didn't finish the assignment on time or what other alternative can we use here Okay, good. Uh, we cannot say uh, she uh, maybe she uh, finished the assignment on time. You don't have such a thing, okay? You, you need to have you need to be very careful with the form of the the form of the primary auxiliary verb. And as far as it's already given in brackets, so it's already a matter of deciding, depending on the nature of the sentence, which one are you going to use? For this case, I say you can use in a positive way, she didn't finish the assignment on time, or she didn't finish the assignment on time. So you have two alternatives that you can, you can use. Question number five. My fellow students, dash dash him, completed the assignment when I entered the class. My fellow students, dash dash, in brackets, him, completed the assignment when I entered the class. By the time I entered the class, the assignment had already been completed. Now, how do we explain it in the past? My fellow students, now go back. At the beginning of the lesson, I explained the past tense of have and is. You remember that? Good, it is her. And therefore, in brackets, we have the helping verb he. The past of this will be her. So the correct form of the primary auxiliary verb that you can write here is my fellow students had had the past tense of he. My fellow students had completed the assignment when I entered the class. Question number six. She dash dash in brackets do like so or is she dash dash in brackets do like so or is 
my dear students, what will be the proper, the correct form of the primary reserve verb that we have to use to fill in the open space or in the bank provided? Remember the form of do and check the structure of the sentence. She, dash dash, like sour oranges. What do you expect to be, uh, you know, when you talk about sour oranges, there's no one who likes sour oranges. Everyone likes the sweet oranges, I hope. Is there anyone who likes sour oranges? I don't think. And therefore, we expect that we're going to have the negative form of the do. The negative form of do. And the negative form of do will be in simple present. Because it's the habit of someone. It is the habit, it's not only one time, at one given time. It is the habit that she does not. And therefore you can have, she doesn't like sour oranges. She doesn't like sour oranges. Okay? That clear, my dear students and other viewers? Good. I hope we have sat together uh, in the same boat. Now, uh, in the second assignment, in the second assignment, this now will be for you. I have done a lot. I've explained a lot concerning the primary auxiliary verb. And I'm sure now you can be able to express yourself by using the primary auxiliary verbs and I'm sure that everyone understood what I have already uh, uh, instructed. And if you didn't understand some of the parts, maybe you can ask your neighbor. But I'm sure that more than 100 or 90, 80 percent of students who are listening to this lecture were able to understand what I was trying to explain concerning the primary uh, primary auxiliary verbs. Now, with the assignment number two, it is up to you now to construct the sentence by completing the given patterns with the correct form of the verb. You already know the different forms of the primary auxiliary verbs. And therefore, I don't expect if you can get stuck uh, in attempting this assignment, this is the second assignment. You have the table given here. This is the table. You can see it on the screen. Assignment 2. Construct sense by completing the given pattern, patterns with the correct forms of the verbs. And when talking about the verbs here, we are referring to the, uh, you know, the, uh, the primary auxiliary verbs as well as the main verbs. Because you cannot separate, they are inseparable. The helping verb will be followed by the main verb. So in column one, column one we, have, uh, we have the nouns and the pronouns. In column two, we have the helping verbs. In column three, we have the main verbs. And uh, we have also uh, objects in this column, and we have uh, adverbs of time, uh, now, and yesterday. Okay? Now, what you have to do, my dear students and other viewers, you retake, you have to take the pronoun or the noun in column one and match it with the remaining parts of the table. That is the helping verb, the main verb, the object here and the adverb of time. Can you do that, my dear students? Yes. I can see you. Very excited because you have understood the reason. And you state it openly that the assignment is very simple. Very simple in the sense that you already know the forms of the primary auxiliary verbs, but also you know how to construct, how to express yourself by using the primary auxiliary verbs. And now, let's keep the ball rolling. The farmer, the farmer, you are talking about singular. The farmer, we have all these helping verbs. Is, has, have, were, are, was, and had. And we have the main verbs here. Sing, taken, took. And we have the objects pose, song, 
a home, an umbrella. Now let us try to match. The farmer is, suppose we take this one here, the farmer is, we have the main verb, sing, the farmer is, sing a song now. The farmer is singing a song now. Now, you know, why I have taken the second now and I've skipped the first one? It's a challenge that we have to share together. You're talking about the farmer being single. Now, suppose you talk about the farmers. Would you keep on using the same primary auxiliary verb is? You are talking about plural. So it's obvious that you cannot use the primary auxiliary verb is. You have to use the primary auxiliary verb that goes with the plural form. That is the farmers. My dear students, can you give me the primary auxiliary verb that can go with this pronoun form of uh, the noun? The farmers, can we say the farmers has? No. It cannot be possible. We cannot say the farmers has, because we're talking about the plural. So the farmers have good, because you can have they have who? The farmers. So the farmers have. Now again, you cannot say the farmers have singing. It's awkward. The farmers have taken a hole. Or the farmers uh, had the farmers had taken a hole. That can be the correct sentence. The farmers had taken present perfect. The farmers passed. We talk about the past. The farmers had taken an umbrella. The farmers had taken a hole. Now, I've just given you that as an example, but I'm sure that you are now competent and you can finish up with the remaining parts of the sentences. What you have to do, just go straight. You, you can start with the pronoun I now, because I have given the two. Uh, the first one and the second one is examples on how you can construct sentences. I'm sure that the remaining pronoun will not impose problems to you on how to construct it sentence by using the primary auxiliary verbs given in the table. So you have the pronoun I, you have the pronoun J, you have the pronoun she, he, and they, and you have the helping verbs right there. So you just match, just match the pronoun and the helping verb. Our interest here is the use of the primary auxiliary verb as well as the main verbs. That clear my dear students and other viewers? Good. I hope you had a very, very nice lesson today. So, my dear students, that marks the end of our lesson for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for making a follow-up with the lesson concerning uh, with expressing oneself. I'm sure now that you can be able to express yourself by using the primary auxiliary verbs. You know where to place the primary auxiliary verb, you know the use of the, uh, how to place the personal pronouns, that a certain personal pronoun goes with a certain primary auxiliary verb. And when you talk about singular, you know the proper auxiliary verb which can go with the singular form. When you talk about the plural, you know the proper auxiliary verb which goes with the plural. You know about the past. If you want to express something in the past, you know how to change. Uh, the have and has to be had, but also the is to be was, are to be were, etc. etc. I'm sure, my dear students and other viewers, you have really enjoyed the lesson. Hope the lesson was enjoyable. And uh, can I mark the end of this lesson for today? Thank you very much for your attention. Bye. See you next session.
NLAB Innovation Academy inatangaza nafasi za masomo ya information technology kwa ngazi ya certificate na diploma kwa wanafunzi waliomaliza kidato cha 4, kidato cha 6 na chuo NTA level 3. Chuo kipo Kinondoni Vijana jijini Dar es Salaam. Zaidi ya kusoma, mwanafunzi anapewa nafasi ya kuanzisha mradi wa kiteknolojia pamoja na kupatiwa mentor wa kumuongoza. Pia tunamsaidia mwanafunzi kutafuta scholarships pale anapohitimu. Tupigie leo 0677 0471486 au 0744100231 au tembelea tovuti yetu www.nia.ac.tz